on the last one of your creation. Hallelujah. With affection. Thank you, Lord for the restored woman every restored woman should be able to say this and to declare it and proclaim it because every single day we face oppositions that want to confront us to let you know that you can't be what God said you will be so we declare in this song that I cannot be a failure so many mothers are failing in their work as a mother so many women are failing in their duty as a woman and this song is really declaring it doesn't matter what the enemy is trying to use to hold you down or to break you down or to feed your mind with your previous failures you know it doesn't matter where you failed when jesus picks you up he cleanses you he washes you he changes your garment you become a brand new person yes i tell you so the devil might remind you of your failures of the places that you didn't do well you look at that devil and say my savior has redeemed me you have no right to condemn me you can quote that scripture in the book of romans chapter 8 verse 1 the bible says there is therefore now no condemnation hallelujah to jesus what a blessed assurance what a blessing what a blessedness to know that there is now therefore no condemnation we deserve to be condemned but our savior took it all away he was condemned for you and for me he said there is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in christ jesus hallelujah who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit so we listen to the word of god we grow by the word of god and the devil will have no hold over us so the lord has given us his word we read his word we preach his word we admonish one another with his word we grow by the word so really i really want to encourage you read the word of god listen to the word of god grow thereby and then you become a terror to this same enemy that have held you back over the years. Good morning, good evening to you. My name is Pastor Joy. And this is the platform of the rest of the women. We've been handling a topic, fighting <laughs> the right way. You know how you're supposed to fight. 
have you ever seen people fighting those days in school <laughs> when a fight breaks out they will say two fighting auntie <laughs> they are fighting in the class you know this is the fight that you know is a fight that we have already established that everybody fights and they are individual fights they are personal they are so personal they are too personal you know that your mother cannot fight it for you they can only encourage you when you are going through the, the battles and we have established it's not a physical fight we've also established that who you fight is your enemy who is opposing you who is an adversary to you we've also established the fact that there are two kinds of enemies yes two kinds of enemies one is the enemy himself Satan the devil, that is our real enemy. That is the enemy of mankind with all his agents, his fallen angels and his evil spirits. Yes. And then you have the physical human beings who really are not your enemies, but who chose to walk with the devil. The devil really wants to express his wickedness against you. And most at times he uses human agents. So this is the second kind of enemies that those enemies are the human beings. And the Bible told us clearly how to handle all these enemies. As for the devil, the enemy, the Bible says I've given you power over all the powers of the enemy enemy and he told us to pull down to destroy he told us that whatever we bound shall be bind and when we exercise that authority the devil loses his hold however there are people who the enemy have influenced hijacked and some of them are really possessed by the devil to confront you so you may not see a physical enemy but you see human beings who are resisting you who are confronting you who actually begin to bewitch you all manner of things they go to consult altars on your behalf they go to raise altars they go to release spells enchantments how do you handle these enemies you know by the time you pray and ex establish your authority over the powers of darkness against your life you also have the physical enemies you confront we've been able to explain how to handle all these enemies and now today we continue and we're going to look at what happens when we don't fight the right way <laughs> what happens when this battle comes our way you know we have read that scripture that jesus said woe unto the world because of offenses because offenses shall surely come but woe unto him through whom that offense will come. Offenses have brought so many woes in life. Both the one that is the offender and the one that is offended. And it multiplies. And we are looking at how to fight the right way. We have talked about so many things. Please, you can listen to any one of them if you missed any one of them. And then trust the Lord to really adjust our mind, our thinking. That is the repentance. God said, change your mind of thinking change your way of thinking because the way the heavens are so high higher than the earth that is how god's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and sometimes we begin to think as we look at situation this is how i should react like this the word of god told us how to react and how to handle every single thing that comes our way jesus told us that the learn of me learn of me before he came, every one of us are going astray. Each of us have gone to our own different way. You are tackling something this way or that way or suggestions from your parents or from your foundation. But when Jesus came, he began to instruct us, this is the way to win this enemy. No wonder Jesus lived his life in such a way the devil couldn't touch him. He said, the prince of this world cometh. I hope you know he comes. And sometimes he remembers you and comes as if he just remembers you with all the demons and situations after situations will come he will really come but when jesus said the prince of this world come it and find that nothing in me we have established the fact that the prince of this world is devil the satan the lucifer whatever that's his name he has the right to go to and fro because he usurped the authority of mankind he is ruling in the place of adam and we are the ones who have been rescued from the power of this enemy so he uses all manner of subtlety to attack us it is left for us who have been redeemed from us i didn't have time to read the book of ephesians i don't have time that's chapter 2 in that place you will see how he is called the prince of the power of the air 
He is the one that is the ruler of the... Uh, Jesus didn't argue that with him. You remember when he was there in temptation in the wilderness with Jesus when he was fasting for 40 days. You saw where the devil was offering him just like he offers every one of us things that will make us to compromise God's standard. He was offering it to Jesus and we saw where Jesus told him. He said, mm, just bow down, I will give you this. He told him. Jesus said, you just didn't tell him it's not your own. Jesus knew that it has been delivered by subtlety, by, by craftiness. He took that authority. He took that. We are seeing companies where some people in dubious ways have transferred everything, the documents and everything, and now it, it legally belongs to them, even though they illegally got it. And because of ignorance, you know, you sign the wrong document or you involve yourself in some things that you are not clear about and you lose it so things. That is exactly how Adam lost to this devil. So he has been in charge. He rules. We that have come to the Lord. The Lord Jesus have delivered us from the power of this devil. And this devil is still continuing trying how to woo us back. How to trap us back. And it's very unfortunate that there are some Christians who are still being influenced directly or indirectly. Who are still receiving some, 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 some things, some pain, yes, from the devil. Some of them are still undergoing sicknesses, diseases and there is a reason why and I'm trusting God as we look at the consequences of not fighting the right way. I'm trusting God that every hole the devil have used, you're not fighting the right way to gain access into your life. It's going to be broken in the name of Jesus. I want to begin by reading a scripture. This scripture I'm going to read first is from thank you Lord Jesus. I'm going to start reading from the book of Matthew. Yes. Chapter 18, verse 34. Matthew 18, 34. That was the word of Jesus that he spoke. I want to read verse 34 and 35. He says, And his Lord was wrath, and the lip had him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. 35 says, So likewise shall my heavenly father i love that that was jesus describing god the father he called him my heavenly father and he gave us a lost prayer he said pray like this our father in heaven so he's also our heavenly father he was referring to him after he have given us is a parable he now said so likewise in this manner shall my heavenly father do also unto you you me yes he's talking to us if we from our hearts Forgive not everyone his brother their trespass. I mentioned the last time about people who can, you know, they, they, they have some issues and they are now settling them. And you are like, okay, we are settled. And as far as they are concerned, it has settled. But in your heart, you are still holding grudges and grievances because of the pain that person has caused you. Listen, Jesus said, if you don't from your heart forgive that person. Whether he's settled or not, in your heart you forgive them. The Bible says, your heavenly father will not forgive you your trespasses. And now, this is very, very serious. That parable there, you can read it for yourself in Matthew 18. You will find out that Jesus was talking about a man that owed, the other one owed. He was owing big money to his master. And then, he couldn't pay. The master that suggested that he, his family, the children, the wife should be sold and the money should be paid. As slaves, they were to be sold. And the man was crying and asking him to forgive him. He will pay him all. The Bible says the man had compassion on him, forgave him everything. And then he was free. He, as in, he is no more owing him. And he saw another person owing him just a little amount of money. And he couldn't release that same compassion to that one. Just read it for yourself in Matthew 18, the Bible says that, 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 that the other servants saw this and it displeased them and they told his master, the master told him, I forgave you all those amount of money and you couldn't show the same compassion and that is exactly what the Lord wants us to do. I have said it very clearly, we are living in a hurting world. We are living in a world full of pain, full of offenses and God is expecting us to do what? To forgive Whoever it is that the enemy has used to offend us, whether they are aware the devil is using them or not, your own part is to forgive them. Now we're going to look at what happens if we don't from our heart forgive these people. Consequences of not fighting the right way. 
What are the consequences? I wrote out some five things. They are more than these five, but I just want to deal with them, these five today. Trusting God that this is going to nail it. And the next time we're going to be here, we'll be praying and declaring against the stronghold of offense. And that will be the conclusion. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, I wrote five things. Number one is what? We disobey God's command. When we don't fight the right way, yes, we disobey the commandment of God. Because God gave us this commandment, love your enemies. And when you say, no, how can I love this person that have dealt with me? You are number one, disobeying God's command. My God. Fighting the right way, I said. Loving your enemy is actually... A, 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 a type of fight. Yes. Because by the time they did you wrong, you are responding with that love. That is a fight. And when we disobey God's command to say, no, this thing is too painful. How can I just let it go? You are disobeying God. That is number one. And this, every of these things have their consequences. When you disobey God, number one, you open up a door for the devil to really have access into your life. And number two, he said, we lose the battle. That, that means evil will prevail. When we are not fighting the right way, we lose the battle. Because you need to engage in the right way of fighting for you to win. So you lose the battle. You disobey God and you are losing the battle. What is that battle? Jesus said, oh, do not be overcome of evil. No. He said, overcome evil with good. We saw the last time, as I read the book of First Samuel, where David was speaking to Saul. I to read that place. He said, from the wicked will come out wickedness. Wickedness proceeds from the wicked. As for me, my hand will not be raised on you. I will not fight you. Let God avenge me of you. He obeyed God. He fought the right way. Showing him love to the extent we read it last time. That Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Is that my, their voice, my son David? Wow. This man is the man that chose 3,000 best chosen soldiers to come and fight one single little boy. Chasing him everywhere. And by the time he found him, God delivered him to him. The Bible said a sleep from the Lord fell upon them, but he couldn't do them any harm. And when you fight the right way, you discover that God will fight your battles with you. When I read that place that God sent a deep sleep from the Lord upon all of them, the soldiers, the uh, Saul himself, all of them were sound asleep. That is God helping you. When you are ready to fight the right way, you see God helping you. And what is more, you are capable of winning that person whom the enemy has influenced we saw Saul crying the Bible said he wept that is a deep cry he wept because that action that David took really broke his heart he said how can I be so evil and I'm being treated so good you spared my life when you see your enemy you won't kill him and that is what God expects so love him and we have already established what the word of God said. He said, I do not desire in the death of the sinner. I do. It's not my pleasure. Even when God punishes the enemy, he uh, punishes your enemy, the human being who has been used to cause you pain. Even when God punishes them, it is not, he, he doesn't delight in it. We read it very clearly in the book of Proverbs. He said that when God is punishing the wicked, do not even rejoice. Even God is not rejoicing. He's spending him. He has to punish him because that is what he deserves. That is why God expects us to pray for them to have this heart of compassion now look at what it says he expects you to love your enemies and if you don't do that to disobey him and number two you lose the fight i want to read the number three you become casualties you become a casualty my god no wonder we are having some bruises and some wounds in this battle. You see somebody worried in the battle. They have been fighting for a long time in that family, in that office. You have been fighting and you are now a casualty. You are losing blood. You are losing strength. You are becoming stiff. You are becoming bitter. These are signs of being a casualty. This is the third sign of what? The consequences of not fighting the right way the fourth one is what we qualify to be attacked my god this one is brutal we qualify to be attacked by arrows of darkness now this is very dangerous 
when we don't fight the right way what is the right way love your enemies and you choose not to love them what happens you open yourself when you when you don't love them that means you hate them you fight against them instead of responding in love you want to attack them some christians have said that pray some kind of prayer. they'll pick up some scriptures from the slam those scriptures majority of them actually is supposed to be addressed to the devil we are taking it and we are hammering it on the people some people that have really hurt us no 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 in that you are praying when you pray like that, number, number one, your heart is no longer like the heart of the Father. When you are like that, you are full of the spirit of revenge. I have said you open up your heart for the enemy to attack you. And what is more, sicknesses, diseases, and all what not is found. It is no wonder that some Christians are exposed. And please, I want to really emphasize this. So many things that we suffer from in our health is coming from not fighting the right way. Have you noticed that God told us clearly, none shall be sick among us. I have discovered that love flows through your life and no sickness can dwell there. I mean genuine love. The love that, the one that loves the enemy. The one that tells him, don't worry. He did it for me. He did it to me. It's okay. I forgive him. Is something that makes no bitterness and no root of evil, no sickness can have any dominion in your body. No wonder some of us Christians will pray and pray and ask God for healing. And it's like God doesn't want to heal me of this. It is not that God doesn't want to heal you. Your healing is there. But the devil has a foothold in your life. I said it the last time. When you harbor resentment, when you harbor unforgiveness, when you harbor bitterness because of what people have done to you, you are actually holding what belongs to the devil and he will come for his goods bitterness does not belong to the whole lord does not be it's not a sign it's not the fruit of the spirit it's actually what you borrowed from the devil as a child of god and these are the reasons why some people have been in sickness in disease they have prayed they have trusted god oh god why am i still you even took some medication still it has lingered and their body is failing i tell you if you can let go and let god you will discover that the devil will no longer have hold over your body it pains God because he doesn't want you to be in that sickness this is a word for somebody who has been under some influence one sickness will go another one will come it's as if it's coming periodically once you let go you will discover that none of those things will have hold over you and start the fifth one the consequences of fighting the wrong way is what darkness increases darkness increases we are the ones that shine the light in the world because of us the world is seeing light if we don't overcome this evil we are covered in darkness yes and this is very painful to me because where we are we're supposed to shine as light when you have shown love imagine what will happen that day you know, I was just painting a word picture as I saw after that scenario where David took that um, water keg, you know, the, the, the water bottle <laughs> of the king and the spare and that. After the whole thing, after, after Saul has cried with the tears still in his eyes and then all his soldiers, Abner, the captain, 3,000 soldiers, imagine them carrying their weapons and just going back home. They are going back home because the person they are trying to kill have, have shown them love and shown them I could have killed this man. And what do you think could have happened? That they didn't touch him. Imagine them going back home. The Bible said they went back home. <laughs> Just imagine them going back home. 3,000 soldiers. They will be so weakened. Even their weapons are not effective in their hands anymore. That is winning. That is light. I believe some of them will begin to have high respect for that boy, David. He was just a boy at that time. Maybe in his 20s at the time that he was just going from one cave to the other. He was radiating light. What happens when we don't allow our light to shine? Through loving our enemies. Darkness increases. And do you know what? There is this nature in human beings to increase wickedness. Because when you are reacting... The other people say, yes, it is even your right. You, you, are, you have the right to feel like this after all you're a human being. We are not just human beings. No, we are spirit beings, purchased by the blood of Jesus. We don't react like mere men. 
No wonder he told us in the book of uh, Psalm 82. He said, you will die like mere men. They know not. They walk on in darkness. That's them darkness we talked about. I don't have time to read that place. But tomorrow, um, the next time I'm going to be here, that will be on Thursday. We are going to pray. Every spirit of stronghold is a stronghold. Every stronghold of offense. We are going to tear it down. Every root of bitterness, we are going to uproot it. And that is how we are going to conclude finding the right way. I know there are so many places we didn't touch. I'm trusting God in the next thing, there will be opportunity for us to touch those areas. How to handle these things as they come practical ways to handle them. So we are going to trust the Lord for somebody who is saying, Father, I really trust you. I really, really trust you to help me. There's one more scripture I want to read. I'll read this scripture and then we pray. This scripture is found in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, I want to read verse 6 down. He said, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. As in when we disobey God, the wrath of God is really released. As I said it the last time in, 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 in Proverbs 24. God said, when I'm judging the wicked, do not be happy. Do not be glad. If he sees that you're happy, he will stop the judgment. He will be angry. In fact, he will turn his anger on you because you are supposed to know. He said the wrath of God is reserved for children of disobedience. These are children supposed to be children of obedience. God said the wrath of God. He said, be not ye therefore partakers with them. These people that have been offending you, they are supposed to have a part of God's judgment come on them. And God said, do not be partakers with them. When you become disobedient, one of the things that happen to you is that you receive a, a, a measure, even though you are the one that was offended. After you are right, at the time you become wrong because you didn't obey God. We are going to trust God to help us to learn of Christ, to learn what Jesus taught us how to handle our enemy. And what is more, we were told to overcome evil with good. Our time is almost up. Let me finish reading this scripture and then we pray. Say seven, be not therefore partakers with them. For you we are sometime darkness. Oh, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. God expects us to walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. Read this place, Ephesians 5. Oh my God. Goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them those things are not fruitful those works of darkness that is why darkness will cover and multiply and increase if all of us christians that are living on the planet earth today can understand this law and begin to fight this right way i tell you darkness will not be covering everywhere there will be places where light will be shining here and there and that is what god really expects us to do the bible said do not have any work don't have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness from today say lord any unfruitful work of darkness have been involved in unfruitful works of bitterness you know roots of bitterness and forgiveness and retaliation the pain let it go yes they are unfruitful they are not yielding anything they're only multiplying evil you i said you can arrest evil you can preserve the way salt preserves decay that is how our overcoming evil will preserve until this earth is judged and we are taken out of the way. While God leaves us on earth, for every day his redemption is drawing near, our eyes are lifted up looking for the redemption of Christ that will happen anytime. While we tarry here, while we wait for his return, we try to preserve so that evil don't cover us. And there is a danger when evil covers you. There is a danger. There is a danger. If you live in evil, if you live in unforgiveness, Jesus said, your heavenly father will not forgive you. If you are not forgiven, what will happen? I tell you something. My God, it will not happen to you in the name of Jesus. Can we pray? Ask the Lord to help you to find the right way. Father, I trust you to help me to find the right way. I don't want the consequences that we just read. Disobedience overcovered by the devil, qualified to be attacked by powers of darkness. 
Can you pray for yourself? In case there are areas in your life you have prayed repeatedly and you look as if the answers are not coming, it is possible that the enemy is having hold over that area of your life because there are some things you are disobedient about concerning the construction of God. You can say, Father, please help me. Go ahead and pray and say, Father, I need your help to fight the right way. I need to fight the right way. So I ask you for your help today. I ask you to help me. Lord, may I overcome this thing that is coming in me. May I receive grace to know and to learn how to love my enemies and to show them love and to really have compassion on them because they are under the influence of the devil in the name of Jesus. I pray the Lord to keep you. I pray the Lord to preserve you. I pray the Lord to cause his countenance to shine upon you. I pray the Lord to help you to overcome evil every single day. It is our duty. We have the authority. We have the right. While we handle these human enemies, we can turn in the place of prayer and address those evil forces forces that came upon them and addressed them and command that devil to break his hold over them and in the name of Jesus father any human that has been used by the devil to cause us pay whatever they are positioned we ask right now that that demon on that assignment be bound we declare that they are relieved of that wicked assignment sent against us in the name of Jesus we bind to you evil spirit of offense we cast you out in in the name of Jesus, Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus, continue to love the Lord and trust him to take you every step of the way as the day of the Lord draws near. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. I see you time. Hallelujah. I can't be defeated. I can't be resisted. I can't be frustrated. Hallelujah. Thank you.